Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the GPU Technology Conference at the uh, PGI booth. I'm here with Michael Wolf from the Portland Group, a programmer. Compiler engineer. How you doing, Mike? I'm great. <laughs> thanks for coming. Well, thanks. All right, so I heard you had probably the coolest demo on the floor, and I thought I'd come see for myself. It's right? the first time we had some build up on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what are you guys showing this week? So, let me uh, just describe uh, very briefly what you're going to see here on the, on the table. I hope it shows in your video. And behind you on that side, we have the green box. That's our uh, system has got two Kepler GPUs. We're going to show some acceleration using the Kepler GPUs. As you know, we've had the PGI Accelerator compilers and now with OpenACC for a number of years targeting the NVIDIA GPUs. And, uh, and so this is going to demonstrate that and I'll, I'll run a program on that. Okay. And behind me on this side is the red box, yeah. which has a AMD GPU. It's the Radeon 7970 HD, okay. and we're going to take the same program and compile it and run it on the RED machine. So the point here is that for a number of years we've been saying at PGI that directive-based programming with OpenACC gives you functional and performance portability across a number of devices. And I've been convinced this was true, but we've never actually demonstrated this. Okay. So, and at this point, Today, I'm not going to show you performance okay. because we have done absolutely zero performance tuning on the AMD box. Uh, so but so this gonna... is just to show that one binary will run in both places untouched. Yeah, so right? let, me, let me go through my demo. We'll show all you. Right, all right, all right. Okay, so I'm going to start here on the green box and let me just uh, show you what, uh, use the PGXL info if I can type to show you that. It's uh, running CUDA version 5.0, and it's got a Kepler K20C, and it's got another Kepler K20C because we never come less than fully armed to this conference. And the program I'm going to run is actually the Spec Swim benchmark. The program isn't particularly important, but this one is uh, somewhat interesting. Clean, make, green. So I wanted to, uh, to go through these messages. So at the top, you'll see the uh, target accelerator flag is NVIDIA Compute Capability 3.0, that's the Kepler, and the host. So this will embed for those uh, open ACC regions. We took the spec version of SWIM, and one of our engineers put in uh, 30 or so directives to port this to open ACC. And we give all the uh, messages when we're compiling this uh, on the uh, as, as appropriate, generating CUDA code and it tells you all the things about the data directives and how it's scheduling the loops and so on. And then I'm going to run this. And this one is just the test data set. So it's a very small data set. The, as you know, spec, the spec CPU benchmarks come with three data sets, test, train, and ref. The idea is test would take a small number of seconds and train would take a half a minute or a minute. And ref is supposed to take five minutes, but of course this was years ago and today they don't take very long at all. Sure. But the point is that I'm running this and it's running on the NVIDIA GPU. I'm going to come over here to the red box. So this is now uh, uh, the other machine sitting behind me. And I'm going to run my same PGXL info. And this tells you that here I'm, I have an AMD device. It's got 32 SIMD units, so a total of 512 cores for some definition of core. But 512, uh, at least parallel floating point units and other information about the uh, processor that it has, three gigabytes of memory and so on. Yeah. Let, me make, let me clean that out. Okay, make the red version. And this time I had my target accelerator set to Radeon in host. So I see more or less the same types of messages. Uh, you see it's generating Radeon code instead of NVIDIA code. And if you compare the, uh, the loop schedule, they'll be very similar because, again, we've not tuned this for the Radeon. There are some differences between, uh, that we already take advantage of between Radeon and Kepler, but nevertheless, it's, it's mostly going to be uh, similar or almost the same. Mm -hmm. And then I can do a make run, and now this is going to be running on this machine using the Radeon GPU. But the more interesting demo, which you alluded to, <laughs> is, uh, let me clean this one out. Let's make, uh, let me do that and run it through pipe again. Pipe it through less. So now I can take 
build this once with my target accelerator flag set to NVIDIA for the Kepler and Radeon. And Radeon. And so now I'm generating both NVIDIA and Radeon code in a single binary. So PGI has had this unified binary technology to, uh, for different CPU types for some number of years. And we've had people use this, uh, software vendors use this when they want to deliver one binary that will run well on, a, on your latest Intel Sandy Bridge and also runs well on your latest uh, AMD Barcelona or a Bulldozer or Pile Driver or what have you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, and so that unified binary al technology allows them to do that. And the same thing is going to happen here with uh, oh, across yeah. um, accelerators. And so I can run this now on the uh, AMD, and this will run on the AMD machine, and I can take the same binary over to the green machine, and it runs and executes on the NVIDIA GPU. And you may ask, do you know that it's running on the NVIDIA GPU? Do you really want to see the proof? I do, I do. Okay, so I can show this. Um, <laughs> let me, we, we have an environment variable called PGI ACC notify. It's an environment variable, not a shell variable, so I better put env. And this will print out one line for every kernel launch. In this particular case, you can see it's launching dozens and dozens of CUDA kernels. And if I came back over to the red machine, it's going to launch dozens and dozens of Radeon kernels. And this is really slick stuff. Now, who are the people that really need this? Okay, so there's three possibilities. Uh, one is uh, obviously, like I said, software vendors that want to deliver accelerated products that work across different vendor targets. Um, okay, that's one possibility. Another one would be, uh, uh, you can imagine, uh, and this happened, we just had someone walk across. Yeah. Okay, another one would be, you can imagine a uh, system, take Blue Waters, where not all the nodes are GPU accelerated. You yeah. can imagine a system that has some nodes where uh, you have NVIDIA boxes and some nodes you have AMD boxes and you want to run one application, MPI across all of them and take advantage of the accelerator you have. And the third one comes into play because of the AMD APU. The APU is basically a GPU and the interface is the same as the interface through a GPU except that the memory is not discrete. Uh, so you can imagine where you'd want to take advantage of accelerating on the APU and your discrete GPU, and that discrete GPU may be another vendor. Very so we're really excited by this. We think uh, we'll get a, a lot of play from, from customers. Well, I, I, I think this is really exciting, and uh, it's like, uh, uh, like run once, no. Compile once and run anywhere, or something like that? Uh, you know, that's the whole premise of high-level <laughs> languages. You only write once, and you yeah, can yeah, compile it and once. run anywhere, and, and, yeah, and this yeah. is a strong step in that direction. All right, well, Michael.